So this is a conclusion of an earlier video. Um, in the earlier video, doing the same question is set it up so that we were able to find the pyramid after it had been cut by the oblique plane VTH. So we found it in plan and elevation. What we're going to do now is just uh, look at the second part of it, which I described at the start of the last video, which is to find the true shape of an object on an oblique plane. So we have our object, it is the green surface and that has uh, been cut by the oblique plane VTH which we can see in the elevation and the auxiliary elevation and the plan and what we're going to do now is find uh, what the true shape of that looks like um, when it has been cut by the surface so if we we're to look at our um, SOLIDWORKS model there just for a moment that grey surface there that's what the object looks like after it's been cut now that's not a true shape of it so what we need to do is we need to be able to look in against that surface and find the true shape of it. So if I click on that, I want to be able to find the true shape of that surface. And now I have a true shape of that object. I did not have that previously. So I now can see the full size of it. Basically that's what I want to try to do with my question. So back to the question page, we have a number of things uh, that we're going to do. So just if we start with this, this is my oblique plane. This is my true, sh uh, the object on the oblique plane that I want to find the true shape of. Basically what we're gonna do is we are going to rebat this down. So taking it from this position and rotating that down so that it's now lying flat on the ground. And then when we're looking down on top, like this camera is at the moment, I can see what this true shape is. So at the moment I can't, it appears narrower than the full width of it. So when we flatten that down, then I see the full width of what that object is going to be. Distances this way stay the same, they don't change, um, but distances here will. So think of standing in front of the goal posts, or if you're straight in front of them, or standing off to the side, things are going to be a little bit narrower. Now, to do this, what we need is we need our plane here and we need to find an edge view of that plane so that we're able to rotate this plane around. Now, thankfully, we already have that view. We found it in the earlier video where we looked at finding where the oblique plane cuts the solid. This gives me an edge view of that solid, which means I can now rotate each of those points around on the vertical trace um, until they're lying flat on the ground. Now when something is going to be lying flat on the ground here, it is going to be on the x1, y1 line. As that is an edge view of our horizontal plane, this, if I can take my points A, B, C and D and so on, and bring them so that they're lying flat on the x, y line, they're going to be on the ground line. So what I'm going to do is each point is going to be moved uh, from here, rotated around, that gives us a distance how far out along the plane it is. But down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each point and move it perpendicular to the axis. So just if you think back to transformation geometry at Junior Cert, when we had a point on our axis, all our lines moved perpendicular to the axis. They were, and so each line is gonna move perpendicular. So if I take the top of this here, and rotate that around, that's going to move perpendicular to where it was starting off over here. So we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to start with point B, and point B is this one up here, so we're taking the point on the cut surface, not on the ground, on the cut surface. And we're going to project them out along here somewhere. I don't know where it is out here just yet, for that I need the distance up here in the elevation, in the auxiliary elevation. So I'm gonna rotate my point around the where the oblique plane intersects with the X1, Y1 line. So taking that to point B and swinging this point around here until it touches the X1, Y1 line. So this here is where B is going to be starting and it's gonna move this distance the whole way down line. So I'm gonna take this distance and project it down line until it intersects with the line that I brought out from B. So this is B, this is the new point B, that's um, a point on the true shape. I'm gonna do the same thing now again for my other point, so if I take point C, that's gonna be moving out here perpendicular. I swing the distance of C around um, the 
this point down here until it touches the x y line x one y line and then i project this point all the way down until it intersects the line from c i'm going to do the same thing for d e and f so that comes out along here somewhere point d is quite low and i've already that one swung around so this point down here is d so just be careful with your lines that you're not getting them mixed up e is kind of a tricky one it's going to be quite close so for this it might be easier just to measure the distance back that it is and i've got two millimeters so that would be here that's e um, f again i'm taking point f point f so where it cuts the oblique plane so the point on the cut surface point f i'm going to swing that point again around um, until it touches the x1 y1 line F and finally A. So just a recap with point A. Each point is going to be taken from where it is in the plan perpendicular to the horizontal trace. So each of these points here is perpendicular to the trace uh, so that they move. If you think of how a door hinge moves or a door moves, the handle stays perpendicular. It's not going to move further away from the hinge as it moves and it's not going to move up or down as it turns. So it's the same idea here. It's not going to move left to right it's going to move perpendicular to our axis so point a then is our final one um, find that up here now go, rotate that around the central point here so this is going to swing around and project it down from where it is up in the elevation or the auxiliary elevation and this gives me point a down here so now what i have is i have all of my points at C goes to B, which goes to D, which goes to E, and so on, to F, and A, and B. And there we have it, that is the true shape of that surface the true shape of that surface so again now I can just shade this in and this gives me the true uh, just make it a little bit clearer this is the true shape of each surface so as each line here now is also a true length so C to D each of my points here have located them and this is the true length of each one of those lines so this in here is the true shape of the cut surface.